So this is it. This is the this is the three M tape. So okay. for the last four years, about four years ago, I listened to podcasts with Patrick McEwen. He's okay. this Irish bloke, breathing guru. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know, tape your mouth so you breathe through the nose more. That's right. the basic premise. Is and for those who don't know much about breathing, why would you want to breathe through your nose versus your mouth? Basic premise of breathing through your nose: it filters the air, so okay. all the snot and stuff that it. it you know, grabs all the little particles, your oh. hairs, so it's it's cleaner. Yeah. It warms it a little bit. Okay. It moistens it a little bit. Okay. So you're not drying out your mouth and that kind of thing. And you're getting that little bit more nitric oxide. Okay. Just because you're getting, um, you're retaining a little bit more of the air in the passageways. Mm. Whereas when you breathe through the, the throat and your mouth, you are losing more CO2, which you don't want to do. So you actually want to retain CO2 day to day. Like when you're sitting around, when you're doing everything, you want to actually retain CO2 because more CO2 will help your body adapt to, like I said, CO2 and oxygen connect. They exchange in the mitochondria. They travel in the blood together. They exchange in the lungs together. So if you hyperventilate, you're lowering CO2 because you're breathing out rapidly. You drop your CO2, which will drop your oxygen, which makes you lightheaded. So if everything's a sliding scale, even that slight difference between breathing through the nose and retaining a little bit more CO2 compared to <sighs> breathing in and out through your mouth while you're sitting working and you know eating and just doing talking mm. uh, can lower your oxygen levels. And you may notice that you feel tired after talking a lot. Like after me talking the camera for yeah. 20 minutes, I'll yeah. be like, you know, I'll, I'll need a little break because yeah. I will be a little bit, I'll have lowered my oxygen levels yeah. a little bit for the period while I've been talking. You can breathe through your nose while you're exercising to practice that little bit of retaining a bit more CO2. Very hard at high intensity though. Yeah, hard and not necessary. Yeah, Not necessary. You're not going to get any advantage really by just doing an extended period of high intensity nose breathing. Yeah. You, at that point, you are better off to just get more oxygen in and out and yeah. more CO2 in and out yeah. so that you can maintain that level of effort. But what you can do is when you're just training moderately at a low level, just do breathing through the nose. And that's also another thing you can use to see how aerobic you are. Mm. Um, I did have to have a nose operation though four years ago or whatever because I was not able to breathe through my nose. My whole sacrum was bent, my nose bone was bent and I was eating like <laughs> because I couldn't breathe hardly oh, at all wow. through my nose. So wow. I was always swallowing air while I was eating. Wow. Um, and I've now, since getting that done and listening to Patrick McEwen, yeah. I now tape my mouth every night, just a little bit of this 3M micropore tape, and I just put a little bit there, and it just holds my lips together. <laughs> I can still talk. Just I don't a, feel like I'm Just one trapped. bit? Just one little bit. Okay. Not like a... People have heard me say you tape your mouth and they get this thick tape and they put it <laughs> masking tape and they put it all the way across yeah. and it's like oh, i woke up all panicked that i couldn't breathe and i was like what were you and they're like oh i had it no just one little piece yeah okay it just holds your lips together and i really notice it on the nights that i forget right. sometimes i fall asleep too quick you know reading a book you put it down and then you're just exhausted mm. um so that is brilliant for getting a better night's sleep wow. and feeling better and more refreshed when you wake up. Like okay. I said, moistens air, warms the air, cleans the air and retains that little bit, gets that little bit more nitric oxide in. Mm. And a tip for if you think your nose is blocked, if you breathe out, exhale, and then pinch your nose and mm. stop talking, but hold your breath, as that CO2 builds up in your body and you start to feel like that urge to breathe, yeah. As you get a strong urge, then release your nose, breathe in through your nose. So what's happened is while you've been holding your nose and not breathing, you've built up more nitric oxide and that's gonna expand like a steroid, it will expand the pathways through your nose, oh. your nasal passages. Okay. So do that once, twice, three times and you'll notice your nasal passages will open up more. So after an exhale, hold, wait till the urge to breathe builds up, breathe in and it will act like a steroid in your nose. Interesting. And the other drug you wanted to talk about. Oh, I was, I'm, I'm eager for this one. I was about to prompt you. <laughs> EPO. Yeah. Erythropoietin. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah. I think. Um, it's a natural 
um, I want to guess to say hormone, chemical that gets released from our marrow and then triggers release of more red blood cells. And that's in response to high levels of carbon dioxide in our blood. So, you know, so you can, this is the best example is um, free divers. So free divers will train to tolerate higher and higher levels of CO2, which then allows them to hold their breath for longer and longer and longer. So they have incredibly good blood for carrying oxygen. They can just load up their blood with oxygen. Their mitochondria can use oxygen incredibly well. And so to do that, the free divers have a few different ways of doing it. They've got tables where you hold your breath a little bit longer on the inhale, the exhale, so on and so on, you build up. And the other way that I've done it and noticed a big improvement is just before I go to sleep, and this little thing helps, it's an oximeter, and some people, if you've got a fancy Apple Watch, that will do it. That'll okay. tell your pulse oximeter. This is oximeter, oximeter. How much are one of those? You can get these for about 40, 50 bucks. Oh, okay. Um, and so you put it on and it's the same as the fancy Apple Watches. It's got a little red light that's reading how dense my blood is mm -hmm. with um, oxygen. And so if what I would do before I go to sleep is slow my breathing down. So I basically breathe out a little bit or breathe out all the way and then I might hold out and then a little urge to breathe, I breathe in a little bit and then hold it and then I'll breathe out a little bit. So basically all you slow. Using the nose? Yeah, through your nose. Yeah. So you basically, you're breathing less and you're breathing slowly and you will feel, you'll get to a point where you'll feel your diaphragm start to trigger a little bit, which is CO2 saying, I want to, you know, Breathe. I want to get rid of this CO2. What's the trigger feeling? What, is there a sensation? Oh, that convulsion control? of like, okay. if, you've, if you're underwater, if you've been underwater and you're like held under by a wave, okay, or yeah. if you just sit here and hold your breath, yeah. you'll get that like, oh, yeah. like, oh, I yeah, want to okay. breathe. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to get to the point where you're tense. No. And your brain and body need to be relaxed while you do it. Okay. You just go to a point where there's a slight feeling of, I want to breathe, mm -hmm. and then hold that. And you may just start out with a minute or two and you may end up doing it for three, four, five minutes. And this is not necessary. This just helps you give you feedback like a power meter. Yes. It helps, it helps yeah. you go, oh, my pulse, my um, oxygen levels today, I was able to get down to 85 and hold it there for two minutes. So that basically means oxygen is not the trigger for you needing to breathe, yes. but it generally correlates. Right. The time that it doesn't, which is really important to say, is if you're underwater, which you should never do on your own, but if you've hyperventilated and gotten rid of all your CO2, and then you go underwater, you will not get that same urge to breathe because CO2 levels are low because you've done the hyperventilating. Mm. Therefore, you can black out because your oxygen levels will drop and you don't get a trigger with low oxygen. Mm. So low oxygen levels are not the trigger for needing to breathe, it's the high CO2 that's the trigger. Right. So do not hyperventilate and then go underwater. No, no. Because you will black out and people do this fairly regularly around the world, that then they die and drown. Yes. Because they were in a pool without people watching and you know it's just tragedy that they don't get that trigger to breathe and they don't know that they're needing to get back up for air. No. So free divers happens regularly. Um, wow. yeah, and people just trying to go in their backyard pool and how many laps they can do. Yeah, don't so do it. don't do it. Yeah. That's a massive warning. Yeah. Um, but you, so what you do here is in the evenings, five minutes every single night? Yep, I did it. Last time I did it when I had fatigue yeah. and I was feeling very lactic very early on, like my heart rate was very low mm. and I would feel lactic at like 110 heart rate. After two weeks of doing this, just felt way better. Right. In the pool now, I can breathe way less than I ever have in my life, Yeah. you know, because of doing more work with my breath. Did so you... I breathe every four or five or six, you know, as opposed to breathing every two. Yeah. And breathing every two in the pool can also make you hyperventilate and limit your performance as well, if you've got a fast stroke. Yes. So do you know what actual impact it's had? Have you had blood tests like before and after doing this technique? No, I haven't had red blood cell tests before and after doing this. Right, okay. Um, so, so how do we know it's like EPO? You know it's like EPO because you will feel that your heart rate will be able to go higher 
without feeling lactic. Right. You will be more aerobic for longer because your blood is healthier. Your blood can carry more CO2 and more oxygen. Right. Your breathing will be not as um, rushed. You'll be able to control it. Like I said, in the pool, it's easy because I can count, you know, strokes Mm. and how many strokes per lap and I can hold every six stroke for, you know, hundreds of meters. You know, those kinds of things are easy if you're a swimmer. Mm. Um, But otherwise, it would be more heart rate and breathing or heart rate and lactate kind of feelings. But if you're already super fit, you may not notice much difference because your blood's already really good. Yes. But that's not to say you're not going to get benefit from it yep. because, like I said, you're not currently a, a free dive world record holder. So therefore, on this sliding scale, there is room for improvement. <laughs> we all have room for improvement because yep. everything's a sliding scale. We don't want to look at anything as you know, black and white. Yep. You know, we're either doing this or doing that. Even burning fat or anaerobic and burning sugar, sliding scale. Mm. anaerobic and aerobic they're sliding scales you're always using one or the other a little bit like you've said you're always producing a little bit of lactate Mm. even when you're aerobic but it's just a small amount that you can get rid of as you go Mm. so everything's a sliding scale yeah